So today I am with one of my best friends ever, Mr. Rick Miller. He runs Feral Family Bread. You all have seen him if you've watched any of my Farmer's Market videos. He's sporting the Tulsa Farmer's Market hat. And we thought we would film a little bit behind the scenes of this impromptu dinner party you're throwing together. And I want to know what you're making right now. Right now we're going to do the most important thing first, which is the sangria. <laughs> and I found in one of my travels, I found this wonderful white sangria. It's got Granny Smith apples, oranges, and green grapes in it. Wow. And it's just, your sweetness, you know, depending on how sweet you like your sangrias, let that dictate your wine. A dry Gewürztraminer. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it, but it's also kind of fruity. So it's I not... don't know how to pronounce that. I've always said Gewürztraminer. <laughs> I don't know that. that I don't... bet they'll know what you mean at the liquor store. I bet they will too. And so that's just is what is that one bottle of? That's two bottles. Two bottles, because we have a few people coming by tonight. So. And then that is one Granny Smith apple and one organic orange. And they were thoroughly cleaned and washed. The reason you want to use an organic orange because you're leaving the peel on, which is going to... Yeah, even though I washed it very thoroughly, you still want to wash them even if they're organic because they're, they're still sprayed. It's just an organically approved spray. But anything you get, whether it's from the farmer's market or wherever, you always want to wash your veggies. Especially, and, and, and organic is better if you're going to leave the outer peeling on anything, right? Yeah, I, in my opinion. I, I, did, that's I my opinion so. as well, too. You want to refrigerate it because you really don't want to pour it over ice because you don't want to dilute it down. Uh, what some people are actually doing now are freezing their whole grapes and they're using them for little ice cubes. You got a little cold treat at the end of the glass. Too. I love that. <laughs> so it's that simple. Just really, it's just the only time that goes into that is the prep time of chopping up the fruit. Yeah, and that took what, 10 minutes? You can go with one dry reverse demeanor and then a regular sweet reverse demeanor. And this is going to be at its best flavor in what, an hour from now? Yeah, give it 30 minutes, stick it back in the refrigerator, keep it cold, and uh, give it 30 minutes or so. And uh, Well, we're going to come back it. and do a taste test. How about that? <laughs> I think we should. Okay, okay let's do, do it. now. We're going to do some zucchini patties. Uh, Anyone that's grown a garden and grown zucchini and or yellow squash, you'll know that one plant will feed an entire neighborhood. Mm. They're very prolific if you keep the squash beetles away. And this is a little spin besides just grilling or just sauteing or just deep frying. Uh, this you add a lot of herbs and other vegetables to it. And a little breadcrumb and egg and until it makes a little croquette or a little patty. Mm, you're really making use of seasonal produce right yes, now. Yes. And are these um, from the Tulsa Farmer's Market? These are. I got these Saturday. You just cut the ends off. Now I've got one of these handy dandy mandolins which will rip your hands to shreds if you haven't used them. They make a, a chain mail glove that I would recommend using if you get one of these. They make this was a, a restaurant quality one, so it's it's a little heavier and a little more expensive. They make one plastic with different width and depth of the blades on them. That's the one that I have, and it's and they work fine. It's fine. They're even now making so you could actually use the big holes on a uh, cheese grater. That yes, would work fine. Okay. Uh, one of those triangle boxes, the kind that have the big holes, you know, different size holes on the sides of them. Use the big holes and and run it through there. Well, let's see what this. Oh, so you're going long ways, long ways. Yeah. Okay. And you kind of want to, I would highly recommend stopping when you get to the seed bed. And then just it. twisting it like one quarter turn, right? Yeah. Okay, there we go. So they're long strips. Yeah. So now we're in the seed You know what bed. else you could use? I have one, is a julienne peeler. I've got one also, yeah. That could they're work. They're great. But that makes it, this makes it go super quick. Yeah. And you're just trying not to shave off the tip ends of, or the knuckles of, of, of your... my fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's what you get are these little, and you can actually saute this right there. You could use it for a, probably use it for a pasta substitute as well if you want. That's what I like to do. I, I use my spiral slicer, but for this, I don't think the spiralized would be as well, good. The thing I like about these or the other tools that we talked about, the the Julian's uh, peeler, is you can stay out of that seed bed because you get a lot of extra water in that seed bed that you don't want. That is to wring as much water, these aren't so bad, out of these, there's a few little drops coming mm -hmm. out. You can also put it in a thin tea towel and twist the top of it, just keep twisting it tighter and tighter and tighter and you can, almost like a cheesecloth, and squeeze the water out of it. 
And that's that's going to make it cook better. To, yeah. Not... You, if you've got a lot of water in there, whether you fry them or grill them or what, bake them even, they'll sweat and steam before they get crispy. And you want that crisp because you're you're hopefully replacing a meat with it or you know whatever your intent is. Uh, you, people like the crunch. And I like know. the crunch. Well, we'll come back and see. So you've got all that zucchini prepared, chopped down. It's starting to sort of soften as it sits there. What else have you We're pulled gonna out? put a little bit of carrot in. It's not a major ingredient. It's gonna add some color and it'll add a little bit more texture. And you're doing the same thing. You're just yeah. taking it doing down. It the same way, just taking it down. Look at that. And the closer you get to taking it down, Watch those digits. If you've got the uh, peeler, the julienne peeler, or even the uh, cheese grater, or the cheese grater blade on your food processor, that would be great too. Completely removes the chance of you yeah. hurting yourself. Okay, perfect. So we've got the carrots added, and then what did you just put in there? Some fresh herbs? This is some, uh, actually it was lemon basil, and some fresh uh, rosemary. Oh, Not wow. a lot, because they can really overwhelm things. And then here are some spicy microgreens. It's radish. a spice mix. There's some arugula and some radish. And there was a third one. I can't remember what it was. Not daikon. Oh, that was the radish. It was daikon oh, radish. Daikon radish. I remember those two. Arugula mustard. Might have been a mustard. So you're just going to add that all in. Nice. Hmm. We're going to add the bread pan. And this, I'm sure you can find a recipe online that will tell you how much of everything to do. But I've never made a batch quite this big, so I don't know exactly how much breadcrumb to use. So I'm gonna have to kind of wing it just a little bit. Well, we wing, I like winging it. These are breadcrumbs that, these are sourdough. You can really smell the sourdough in it. Scratch and sniff. Yeah, and uh, it was actually some bread I had at home from Feral Bread that was getting a little stale, so I laid the slices out and let them dry out and ran them through the uh, grater blade on my food processor. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Back to where we were, I'm adding just a few more breadcrumbs. The bread comes really, breadcrumbs really help hold, bind everything together and hold your patties together when you add your egg. Oh, and then those are some nice eggs from yeah, the Tulsa Greenwood, Farmer's Market. Yeah. Greenwood Farms. A batch this big, I'm gonna start with two. And you can, you know, put them in a bowl and whisk them together real pretty like. If you want, or you if can just get like. you can just get your hands in it you like you're doing. It, yeah, you just kind of go for a texture, and the texture you want is something that when you make a patty, it kind of stays together. Okay. If it doesn't, if it's too wet and sloppy, it means you've gotten too much egg or too much water, and so you'll probably want to put some more breadcrumbs. And if it's too dry, and it, it won't stay together because it's dry. See, this is really a, a good consistency, a really good texture. So, I think next thing I'll, we'll make the uh, tzatziki first. Oh, the, the sauce. Yogurt dip. Yeah. Okay, nice. well, so tell me what you're, you've got some garlic. Got some garlic. I'm going to get it peeled. You don't want to crush this. You want to keep it as whole as you can. You just kind of cut off the the uh, root bud end. It looks like it's got the little root, you know, little hard end of it. And then peel the the dried skin and this garlic, as with most everything we're cooking with today, came from Cherry Street Farmers Market. Yes. Um, okay, then we're going to start with some plain Greek yogurt. Let's see the label. Turn it around here so we can see what we're working with. Greek gods. I guess it wouldn't really matter, but Greek you is want what a you're good, looking stiff, for. Thick. You know, you, with oh, a lot of that. texture to it because you're going to add grated cucumbers and grated garlic in it, and they will have moisture in them. Now, a lot of people will shred and grate their garlic or their uh, cucumber and wring the water out of it like we did the zucchini in the beginning, but I don't really do that. You can skip the step by getting a heartier yogurt like the Greek yogurt. Right. That's... And I really, the big ones are, are kind of easy, the big cucumbers, but I like these little ones. You don't have to worry about getting every smidgen of peel off of them. And they're they're just... not as water filled either. They're a little, yeah. dr little drier. Those are actually pickling cucumbers, aren't they? Yeah. And the same thing I try to stop when I get to the seed bed. When you get down to where the seeds are, that's where most of the moisture is going to be. Okay. So you're just grating it right up. Oh, yeah, there it, goes it is. Right just in. right into that. And uh, I use this method for cucumbers even when I do tabbouleh. 
so we don't have chunks of cucumber. Really? But you've got the total essence of it and you've got all the moisture and it really helps neutralize the lemon juice in most tabbouleh where it's not so acidic. You can still taste the, the lemon, but you know how sometimes it feels like it's etching your teeth from all the acid that's yes. in it? Yes. And uh, this, you know, so this, this is this the is, technique you use for tabbouleh, yeah. which I believe, I think I heard, is going to appear at this dinner party this evening. Yeah, I made some uh, kale and quinoa tabbouleh. Oh, God. With Help some us. of those wonderful fresh tomatoes from the farm. I'll tell you, anything you can put tomatoes in, get it right now and make it because tomatoes are triple bumper harvest right now and the, I have not had a bad one. This I have year. not had a bad one either. Really just that that hot heat that we've had really brings up the flavor of those tomatoes. There's one vendor that has these huge giant ones and I don't know if I've still got one over there or not. Let's go uh, look while you're grading that. I'm gonna like go. eating a watermelon. I mean they're so sweet and so juicy. I think it's uh, who is it? Heart's Desire. It's Heart's Desire. They're my favorite tomatoes. They are those like beefsteak tomatoes. Yeah. That one's not but they're quite. heirlooms because they're kind of gnarly. They're kind of knobby. Oh, they're they're, they're gnarly, all right. But boy, the flavor can't be beat. Look for those at your local farmers market if you don't live in Tulsa. Okay, there's two pickling cucumbers I have in there, and that's uh, so you can see just a little bit, and just kind of dissolves in there. You've got the full essence and a little bit of the fiber from the cucumber, but you don't have chunks of cucumber. And you don't need a blender to and make it happen. You don't need happen. a blender, and I do the same thing with the garlic. Really? Yeah. I run the garlic. So you're getting the, the almost like goes, the garlic juice with just a little bit of garlic yeah. uh, pulp. That's kind of how that turns yeah. out when you grate it like that. And it gets the flavor all in. You know, you can really kind of get away with using a little bit less garlic uh, because it, it really gets in there quick. You don't have to let it set overnight. So am I hearing that this tzatziki is just these three ingredients or do you now, add anything else? There's one more little little thing goes in oh, there. Okay. Two, really. Let's see, there's the garlic. There's maybe, a, if you'd measured it, it was maybe a teaspoon of shredded garlic. Okay. And then dried mint. Dried mint. You wouldn't want to do fresh in there. I don't. Some people do. I really like the dried. It's going to have a little bit more of. It's a condensed. Full. If you, mm -hmm. any time, you know, the rule of thumb has always been if you use a fresh herb as opposed to a dry herb, uh, if the recipe calls for a, a teaspoon of dry, you'd want to use three of fresh because okay. it, it goes a lot further. And then sea salt. This is some Gray Brittany Thrip sea salt that we keep and use and sell at the bakery. Say it again, Gray Brittany? Gray, gray Brittany, but any good sea salt works. You're not getting all the iodine and the chemicals. And I won't use traditional table salt anymore. I like the pink Himalayan salt. I do too. It's, they're all a little real subtle difference, but they're 98% sodium chloride, all of them. So they're, they're all salt, but some of them just have, they bring a little something different to the well, we like with the Good minerals point. intact. We don't want it bleached and stripped and all right. of that stuff. So, okay, so that's the sauce. That's it. Taste it, yeah. Oh man. Good. Yeah. Okay, let me get let me get a finger in there. Oh my god. You can taste the garlic. The cucumber kind of melts it out. And then of course the mint will. Being dried mint, it'll take it a little longer for the flavor to really take hold in that. That's simple, but you are an artiste. <laughs> Well, Mr. Miller, so we're out here in the old grill. We're what do you got? Grill. You've got your zucchini. We've got uh, our little zucchini patties. We're going to put them on a little plate here because I don't want to waste them falling through. So the, you've got this, and I don't want to get too close to it because it's uh, hotter it's, than it's donut hotter, grease. It's hotter than donut grease. That's funny. <laughs> so it is. It looks to me, it's almost like a cookie sheet with holes in it. So yeah, you can a, buy. The, I got this. I think it's actually at Home Depot. Just a, kind of a standard yeah. grill pan, right? You don't have to worry about stuff falling or okra. You don't have to worry about it falling through the grill. A little bird told me we might have some okra have happening some up okra in here tonight. Here. Some, local local okra. some local okra. Locra, local, local. Locra. We'll be locra vores. We have had someone okra come and Homa. join us. It's Chris from Tulsa Farmers Market. And Oklahoma. Oklahoma is right. <laughs> Isn't that great? Okay, so that's just going to go in there. What's the cook time you think? You're just going to keep checking it? I have to keep checking it. This, this, I don't know how accurate this thermometer is. It's showing like 400 degrees. So, so what's all on that patty? It's got zucchini, carrots, 
uh, the spicy sprout mix from uh, mm. uh, uh, what other name? De Sloth Acres. Sloth Acres. Thank you. And it's got some uh, rosemary. Yeah. And then eggs and sourdough breadcrumbs. Mm. We're also having sangria. Oh, uh, we I filmed him making okay, that good. too. That yeah, tastes like summer. Yeah, it the is. Summer, the summer that you love, not summer like Oklahoma <laughs> smoking hot summer. I'll tell you who wishes he could get a little something to cool him down is this little dog back here. <laughs> so cute. We do. Show me what you got. Here are those uh, zucchini croquettes, little zucchini patties. Here is our uh, basically a caprese pasta salad. It's shell pasta with fresh farmer's market tomatoes, super fresh feral family bread, fresh mozzarella. Uh, Pesto that's made with basil, pecans, and pecan oil from the farmer's market. And then we have a uh, quinoa and kale tabbouleh. Mm. And then some grilled and just beautifully charred okra. If you've not had grilled okra, you're missing out. It's got, it, it's not slimy. It's got all the flavor of fried okra without stinking up your house or heating up your house in the summer. Slap it on the grill. Either get one of those grill things like we use. Yep. Or get like a fish basket where you clamp it. Uh, just toss them with a little oil, salt and pepper, or what other thing I like to use is uh, blackening spice on them. Mm -hmm. And they're a little blackened and some grilled uh, feral bread. Feral bread. Uh, uh, Storato. It's like um, it's like candy. It, I mean, it looks it looks really like like it's burnt. It's not. It and tastes then, like candy. But what how healthy is that? Talk about here's the, that. Well, there there are no. Yeah. There's, there's no, no meat, meat in this it. Is, this is, and there's the tzatziki we made. So while this ago. is meatless Monday dinner, right? Meatless Monday on the Here grill. What do y'all think? Are you getting super stoked it's to eat it? Stoked. I'm awesome. super excited. I can't wait. I can't wait either. Okay, guys, we're gonna indulge. Everybody, you gotta make this dinner. It's Ciao, a Bella. winner. Yeah. Goodbye. See ya. Mama Sophia's tzatziki, but yours is almost as good as Mama Sophia's. It's his mother, Mama mm. Sophia.